The Colonian Butcher is the newest vignette from Team Death, but since it doesn't have an official build guide out yet, I thought I'd take the time and make my own. Just as a warning, there are a handful of areas where the relevant footage is missing. This is because the footage got corrupted whilst transferring them over to my PC, and because my giant brain decided to delete the original recording before checking everything was okay, I didn't have much to replace it with. If it were possible to reconstruct a miniature without microwaving it, I'd do so. But regardless, I've done my best to illustrate these missing steps where applicable. With that being said, let's get going. Here we have Butcher Sprue 1 and Butcher Sprue 2. We also have the Survivor Sprue, and of course, their bases. For this assembly guide, I'll be using a pair of Tamiya clippers, a pair of God Hand clippers for those extra fine snips, some Tamiya extra thin cement, I'm also using some 1000 grit foam bricks. For this first step, all you'll need is a giant face base from Sprue 1. After making a rough cut with the Tamiya clippers, I'll go back again with the God Hands to get everything smoother for the cleanup phase. You may find that clipping with the God Hands is an unnecessary step, but personally, I find it helps me get cleaner cuts more often than not. Regardless of if you're using them or not, always make sure to go back with a scalpel or other fine blade afterwards to make sure you can get rid of the material that remains. If there are any noticeable uneven areas after your scalpel cleanup, this is where I come back with the sandpaper just to make sure everything gets leveled off. After all that, take the insert, place it into the base and run your plastic cement around the edges. After you've got round the entire way, apply even force to make sure you get a secure bond. I use all of these steps as needed, and so for the rest of the build, it's safe for you to assume this is the same process I follow. The corpses for the base are where I hit my first footage roadblock. The order in which you want to put the pieces on the base are shown on screen now. If you cut them out and do them in the order, you should have no problems gluing as you go. After you've put the corpses on, the next step is to put the two cleavers on. Each cleaver only fits a certain way, so it shouldn't be too hard to get them in the right places. Next up is this lantern on a small pile of skulls. If you place it in the first open space next to the leftmost cleaver, you should find it fits quite nicely. For this piece, I recommend placing it first and gluing it afterwards to ensure you get the right position. Now it's time for a Warhammer touch. We have two piles of skulls that need to go on the base. Both are identical, so it doesn't matter which one you put where, but as long as you get them in the right place, you're all good. Now we get to start on the big man himself, starting with his legs. The pieces you need are shown on screen, and they go together fairly easily. Both leg plates need attachment to the thigh plates, and each side has pegs so that they only fit one way. Next up is to attach his legs to his body, fairly self-explanatory. Each of the legs have a peg to fit each side of the body, and they only fit one way. Here he is, in all of his legged glory, although you may be disappointed to find out he can't stand on his own. Now, we're paying some attention to his loins. For an easy fit, all you have to do is place a circular peg inside the hole on his torso. And it's a similar story on the other side. and you'll be pleased to hear he can finally stand. In our tour of the body, we're now looking at his feetsies. The toe piece that's at more of a right angle is the one that goes on his right side foot. The other one goes on the left. In this next clip, you'll see that the butcher has his arms. This is another piece of footage that I lost, although it's fairly self-explanatory, so not all is lost. One arm just needs to be attached to the torso, and the other needs the forearm attached to the bicep. The hands can be a bit tricky, but I found it was useful to use a scalpel or something similar to help positioning and keeping things tight. After his hands are on, we'll want to put his shoulder together. The first two we'll do off the model, but the final piece we'll put on after the shoulder's already been put in place and is cured.
Now that the shoulder's in place, we can put the final pauldron piece where it belongs. Next up is the knee pad. There's only one place you can go, so put it there. Next up is head. I mean, his head. We'll take the main area and place it onto his neck. The other pieces we can add on later. Well, later is here. Take the two highlighted pieces and place them on either side of his head to complete the main body of the butcher. Now, onto his billowing cape. To start off, we'll grab the two inside pieces of the cape and glue them together. Next, we'll take the large outside piece and add it to the two pieces we've already combined. To finish off the cape, we'll glue on the top that goes next to his head. To finish off the butcher, all we need to do is attach the finished cape onto the main body. To finish off the butcher, all we need to do is attach the centipede to his base. Although, if you're planning on keeping him separate for sub-assembly, I'd recommend leaving the centipede separate as well, as with it on the base, he won't be able to fit on which might cause a little bit of trouble when it comes back to reassembling them. Red uses D19 as her base insert. Then we'll glue D15, 16, 17 and 18 onto the base. Finally finishing with A15, for whatever reason. I'm assuming this must have been an error from the manufacturing process. There's no particular order to these parts, so as long as you get them on, you're golden. This lantern can be tricky to get into the right place, but if you use the shop image as a reference, you should have no problem. This sword fits into a tiny slot on the right hand side of the base. If you spend a little bit of time looking, it should be fairly obvious. At this point, I put on D10 and 11 onto D1, which is the torso piece. After doing so, we'll then put D13 onto the torso. Following that, we'll then put D12, 6 and 7 onto the torso. I recommend placing this piece first and then gluing it afterwards, just makes it a little bit easier. At this point, we can now glue red to her base. To construct red's head, we first have to put D2, 3 and 4 together. We can then add her head onto her body. To finish up with red, all we need to do is attach D8 and D9 onto the spaces near her gauntlets. And red is finished. Forgot is my worst for missing footage. I started off by putting A8, 6 and 7 together. After doing that I put 9, 15 and 12 together and put that onto the base. After you've done that we can then attach the torso to the legs that are on the base. And then the head. To finish up, we then put A10, 11, 13 and 14 onto the arms and body. For hollow space, all we need to do is glue on C15. After doing that, you want to put C11 and C12 the legs onto the body C3. We can then put C13 and 14 onto the back of the hips.
then we can glue on C2, C4 and C1. These head pieces have nice pegs, so it should be easy enough to put them together correctly. C5 then goes onto the back. C6 and C8 then go onto the arms. Again, fitting only one way. The final pieces for hollow are C9, C10 and C7. I don't have any footage of how to glue these together, so I still will have to do I'm afraid. The only base piece for Brave is B14. The store page shows these reeds next to a head. However, in actuality, they fit in between two of the rocks on the base. To get to this point of Brave, you want to put B2 and B3 together, and then B8 and B9 onto the torso. At which point, we can then glue on B10, 11 and B13 onto the body. then followed by B12, B1 and B4. To finish off with Brave and the vignette, we have to glue B6, B5 and then B7 onto his arms. Here he is, all finished up. If you found this build guide useful, feel free to subscribe. The missing footage was a pain, but I've done the best I can with what I've got left. If it helps even one person out, I'm happy. Left over are the two weeping survivors and the lanterns. I'm not using the survivors, but they're easy enough to put together, so I didn't put them in this guide. As far as I can tell, the lanterns can go wherever you feel best. I'm thinking about doing an assembly guide for the Black Knight as well, so if that's something you'd like to see, be sure to let me know. Catch you next time.